U.S. Air has a cost structure which is non-viable uh, in today's airline business. Now, that in an important way involves its labor costs, but it involves other things too. But it, uh, it certainly involves its labor costs, and they've they've stated this publicly. And uh, uh, I think, uh, and they have uh, they have uh, they are talking. Uh, with their unions about it, and they're talking with other people about other parts of their cost structure. Uh, and I think you'll just see that what, what unfolds in the next uh, relatively few months, because uh, there isn't any question that, uh, that the cost structure is out of line. I think the cost structure could be brought into line, but whether it will be brought into line or not is another, is another question. And you know, the, looking backwards, the answer is not to to get into businesses that need to solve problems like that, it's to, but that was that was a mistake I made, uh, and I think in Seth Schofield, you've got a manager who understands that business extremely well, who probably is as, in my view anyway, is as uh, uh, well regarded and trusted by people who are going to have to make changes, as anyone could be in that position, but that may not be enough. I mean, that, that, uh, there's enormous tensions when you need to take hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars out of the cost structure of any business. And when you need cooperative action all, by various groups, each one of which feels that maybe they're having to give a little more than some other group, and understandably feels that way. You know, that is, that is an enormously tough negotiating job. I think Seth is as well equipped for that as anyone, but I would not want to, you know, I cannot predict. The uh, U.S. Air preferred, as I, as I mentioned in the annual report, you know, it, it looks a, considerably better than it did uh, 18 months ago or thereabouts, but their fundamental problem, and Steve Wolf has said this, the new CEO of U.S. Air, the fundamental problems are there. And they either address and correct those fundamental problems, or those problems will address and correct them. And uh, the uh, you know they they their their uh, their costs are out of line. Their costs are those that are are uh, relics of a regulated, protected environment, and they are not in a regulated, protected environment. And so far, they have not had any great success in in in, in correcting the situation. I'm, Knowing Mr. Wolf, I'm sure he is, you know, focused entirely on getting that changed, and he will need to get it changed. Uh, uh, and he, his record has been uh, pretty successful at that. So we are, we're a lot better off with our U.S. Preferred, Air Preferred than we were 18 months ago, but uh, it still is, is uh, a mistake I made, and we, uh, uh, we would have lot, been a lot better off if I'd... Uh, if I just, uh, as Charlie says, gone out to a bar that night instead. <laughs> <laughs> you got any comments, Charlie? On yes, sir. He doesn't want to comment. It may sound no. like it's his deal, but <laughs> it's plainly worth a lot more than it was last year. <laughs> My question involves the headwinds which face U.S. Air. Are you considering redeploying assets, or how will your management plan to improve this company? Well, we're, we're just an investor in U.S. They call it now U.S. Airways, but they, we're just an investor. We've owned a preferred stock for almost eight years. Uh, the company had some very rough going. Uh, Charlie and I uh, would not have thought its chances for sur survival were very good even some years back. But it, it's, it's done quite well lately. Stephen Wolf has done a terrific job of running it. So as of uh, the middle of April, all of our dividends are were caught up current. We've received, uh, I don't know, 260 or 70 million in dividends in the last eight years. And, uh, but we have nothing to do with managing the company. As a matter of fact, there are some people that have, might, might have noted that when Charlie and I left as directors, that was when the fortunes of the company turned abruptly upward. And, uh, uh, but 
and we feel very good about what, what, what Stephen Wolf has done. I mean, he, uh, there's no tougher job than running an airline. That is not a job I would wish on anyone. And uh, uh, he's improved the operating performance uh, dramatically, and the financial performance has improved, and better yet, the preferred dividends have been paid. So uh, I, I, we thank him for that, but we have nothing to do with it. By the terms of our preferred, uh, in just a little over two years, we are due to be paid back our principal amount. It, it was really a loan in equity form with a kick, possible kicker on the upside uh, because of the conversion privilege on the preferred. Uh, we would have sold the pro conversion privilege for nothing uh, uh, a few years ago, but it actually is not so far away now. The stock's are in the low 30s, and our conversion is in the high 30s. So we actually have some chance of even having conversion value on that. It's been a very pleasant surprise. Uh, um, you know, I, I made a mistake in getting into it, but but Mr. Wolf is, is, uh, is, seems to be capable of... Uh, of uh, nullifying my mistake. Charlie? Yes. What was the other question on Charlie? Uh, buying it. The airlines. airlines. Oh, yes. I, airlines. I, yeah, well, I always repress everything on airlines. I don't want to. <laughs> no, we never, we've never bought an airline uh, common stock that, that I can remember. So what we did was we lent money to U.S. Air uh, for a 10 year period and we had a conversion. Uh, privilege there. It looked like it, it was a terrible mistake. I made the mistake, but it, it, we got bailed out. Uh, but we we never made the determination. When we bought our stock, U.S. Air was selling at $50 a share or thereabouts, the common. And we didn't have an interest in buying U.S. Air at 50 or 40 or 30 or 20. Uh, and we got a chance to as things went along all the way down to four. Uh, and we never bought it. Uh, and we never bought American or United or Delta or any other airline. It is not a business that intrigues us. We did think it was intriguing to, uh, to lend money to them with a conversion privilege, and it's worked out now as a, uh, because we got lucky and because Steve Wolf came along and, and, and uh, really rescued the company from right at, at the brink of uh, bankruptcy. Uh, but we're unlikely to be in airlines, although, again, we wouldn't mind lending money uh, to a lot of businesses that we wouldn't buy common equity in. I mean, that, that, that could happen again in various industries, including the airline industry. Uh, uh, Charlie, do you have anything to say on either the airlines or the Japanese market? Well, the airline experience was very unpleasant for us. The net worth just melted. It was like a billion and a half, and it just went a hundred million, a hundred million, a hundred million. And Finally, the cash is running down. It is a very unpleasant experience. And we try and learn from those experiences, but we're very slow learners. This question comes from Bill Miller of Leg Mason. He writes, the U.S. airline industry has been plagued with terrible economics for over 100 years. With the pending merger of U.S. Air and American, the industry will have consolidated to the point where the top four carriers will control almost 90 percent of the traffic. As a result, the industry has been consistently profitable this past several years, with many of the airlines now earning double-digit returns on invested capital and generating substantial free cash flow. Do you think the industry's much improved economics are likely to persist? The airline industry you know, has this situation where they have uh, uh, very, very, very low uh, incremental costs per seat, you know, with enormous fixed costs, and the temptation to sell that last seat uh, at a very low price is very high, and it's very, and sometimes it can be very difficult to distinguish between the last seat and other seats. So it's it's a labor-intensive capital-intensive, largely commodity-type business. And it's been, as Bill, Bill Miller points out in that question, it's been you know, a death trap for investors ever since Orville uh, took off. I mean, as I've said, if there had been a capitalist at Kitty Hawk, he should have shot down Orville and done us all a favor. But, they, uh, <laughs> but having neglected to do that, 
investors have poured money into uh, airline companies and aircraft manufacturing companies now for 100 years plus with terrible results. And if it ever gets down to where there's one airline and there's no regulation, it will be a wonderful business. And then the question is whether having gotten down now through a lot of bankruptcies uh, to a relatively few that are doing high percentage of the seat miles, whether it's a good business yet. Uh, I don't know the answer to, but I'm skeptical. You really couldn't create another railroad. And I hope not. And you, yeah, <laughs> and you can create another airline. Very easily, and you have people and that's that like to do That's what we don't it. like about it. And people love doing it. It's, a, it's yeah. exciting to people. And you can sell the idea. I, I've had probably a dozen proposals over the last 25 or 30 years from people that, that want to get into the airline business one way or the other, and, and a number of them have. It's sexy for some reason. I mean, it, it, yeah. you know, if, if you go to the office of some Mr. Big CEO and say, I want to talk to you about this new airplane, you get in the door. You know, I mean, it, if you want to talk to them about hauling coal or something, it's a little different. So it, it, it is a business that attracts people. And you can go out and raise money for a new airline. Uh, and uh, the record is, it's really been something. I don't know how many bankruptcies there have been in the airline field, but it's, it's an enormous number. And of course, some have done it more than once. We bought US Air. I bought that. I was at Garotz with, with uh, uh, Ed Kolodny, and he explained to me how wonderful the airline was. He, he's a good guy, incidentally. And I wrote a check, and, and by the time the check was cashed, they were, they were having troubles. I mean, <laughs> it did not take long. No. And then they went bankrupt twice. We, got, we were very lucky on it. We actually made quite a bit of money on it, as it turned out, because there was a little blip at one point, but I think it went bankrupt twice after we bought it, and Charlie and I were on the board, and we would look at these projections, you know, and they were just ridiculous. I mean, they never came true, did they, Charlie? <laughs> no, 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 it was. We were very popular because we actually pointed that out a few times. And... You, couldn't, you couldn't pick a tougher industry, you know, ever since since Orville went up and I said, you know, that if anybody had really been thinking about investors, they should have had Wilbur shoot him down and save everybody a lot of money for a hundred years. Uh, you can go to the internet and type in airlines and bankrupt, and you'll see that something like a hundred airlines in that general range, you know, gone bankrupt in the last few decades. And, and actually, Charlie and I were directors for some time of U.S. Air, and people write about how we had a terrible experience in U.S. Air. It, it, it was the, one of the dumbest things I've ever done. And, and there's and a lot you of made a very amount of money out of it. it yeah, a, and we made a lot of money out of it. It's undeserved. Uh, it's a fiercely competitive industry. The question is whether it's a suicidally competitive industry, which it used to be. I mean, when you get virtually every one of the major carriers and dozens and dozens and dozens of minor carriers are going bankrupt, you know, it ought to come upon you finally that maybe you're in the wrong industry. Uh, it has uh, been operating for some time now at 80% or better of capacity uh, being available seat miles. And um, you can see what deliveries are going to be and that sort of thing. So if you make, the, I think it's fair to say that they will operate at higher degrees of capacity uh, over the next five or ten years than the historical rates, which cause all of them to go broke. Now, the question is whether uh, even when they're doing it in the 80s, they will do suicidal things in terms of pricing uh, remains to be seen. It is no cinch that the industry uh, will uh, have some more pricing sensibility uh, in the next 10 years than they had in the last 100 years. But the conditions have improved for that. They've got more labor stability than they had before because they're basically all going to, they've been through bankruptcy and they're all going to sort of have an industry pattern bargaining, it looks uh, to me like. They're going to have a shortage of pilots to some degree, but it's not, it's not like my